I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to dye a few different silk blends. These are some very special yarn bases that all have 50% silk, but then the second half of each of these skeins is different between Superwash Merino, Yak, or Camel. And I think that this is my first time ever dyeing Camel fiber. The Desert Silk Baby Camel Sock yarn from Wool to Dye For is 50% baby camel, 50% silk. And it's a 100 gram skein like we're used to. The Pure Luxury yarn is a 50 gram skein from also from Wool to Dye For. Actually, all the yarn is from Wool to Dye For today. And it is 50% silk, 50% yak. The Silk Sport is slightly different from our other blends because the other 50% is superwash merino wool. This yarn is 50% silk, 50% superwash merino. And we're gonna dye all three of these yarn bases using the same technique in the same pan. Now, clearly we have three very different colors of bare yarn here. And so the resulting final color we get is not just gonna be about the fiber content, but the color of that fiber content when the yarn is bare. And so we're gonna see a mo the most dramatic change on our white, or you know, off-white, but white silk sport compared to the camel, and especially compared to that pure luxury because with that 50% yak content, it is a very deep color overall. I think that the previous max yak percentage I've dyed is 20%. Uh, and so we know that those took up color very well, and so we'll see how this goes. Of course, I don't have a second skein of our Camel Blend or the Pure Luxury yarns to compare when we finish dyeing to that, but we can compare the three of them dry together, and then when we have the finished yarn, we can compare that dry. Now, one other little note. <laughs> I expect that the Superwash Wool Silk Blend might absorb a bit more color uh, than the others because, well, for two reasons. One, Superwash, that's probably the big one. Uh, the Superwash process makes it easier for the dyes to kind of go into the fibers and so the dyes will strike faster. But also potentially because it's wool. Now, things on Yak Blends do seem to bind at similar rates, but those have always had wool in it. So I don't know if Yak is gonna be like silk or alpaca where maybe it needs more time for the colors to bind. But we'll see if we can observe anything and we're gonna go have some fun. I have not yet decided on the techniques I want to use to dye this yarn, but I do know I want to pre-soak it overnight so that way all the fibers can be nice and saturated. Uh, a lot of times if I'm dyeing something completely brand new I might do some kind of tonal approach and I'm debating uh, between doing maybe something low immersion versus something dip dyed but I think low immersion variegated is the way to go especially because we have three different yarn bases here. But we'll see what I decide tomorrow. This five gallon bucket is maybe about half full of water and I had added about a cup or so of white vinegar to this to use for another project. I don't always pre-soak yarn in acid, but since I had this ready to go, uh, as a pre-soak, I thought that we would go ahead and use it. Now, the one other thing I do want to note before this overnight pre-soak is that I don't know and I don't have measured the concentration of acid to water, and I'm considering using this pre-soak as our dye bath for tomorrow. But I used one of those disposable cups I have full of vinegar when I originally added it, so I would say there's probably at least a cup of acid in there. So a good amount, um, if that helps you uh, figure out how much liquid I have going forward. But anyway, I'm now going to come back tomorrow morning so we can dye the yarn. Today we're going to be working on my electric hot plate. This is a Cuisinart double burner, uh, and it works pretty well, even if it takes a while to heat up. But one perk is that I can work from my countertop uh, and then have a little more room to move around. 
In general, I do prefer my gas stove because I can control the heat a little better. I can quickly raise or reduce it much faster than we can here, but I know not everyone has that option, and so sometimes we go for the hot plate. But let's bring over our yarn. Everyone feels nice and saturated. The hot plate is not yet plugged in, um, <laughs> so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, things aren't gonna get like scorched. Uh, I never plug it in until I want the heat on. I'm trying to decide the order that I wanna have these in the pan, and I think I'm gonna put the Pure Luxury in the middle. I considered putting our white um, superwash merino silk blend into the middle, but the reason why I decided to go this way is that whatever's in the middle sometimes gets a little less dye if things are on top of it, but ultimately, if it's in the middle, we know dye's gonna cover it, and with this being so dark, it could be really easy for me to forget to add more liquid if it's at an edge. But speaking of liquid, we am bringing over that five gallon bucket and we're gonna add enough water to cover things well. We can always add more. Um, okay, so we're at like, we're not at a low immersion situation, we're at a medium immersion. You can see that we've got space here for our fibers to float a little bit. This means that we will be able to get some dye go move beneath the yarn, but we might also still want to flip things uh, as we go about this. And I'm planning on using liquid dyes today. Uh, I guess I didn't show those on camera yet, but let's start heating this up and then I'll grab those dyes and show you what we've got. So we're gonna use a dye stock of Dark Navy. This is a 1% stock solution of Dark Navy. And then I thought we would also use some emerald green and combine those. I think both of these are colors that are pigmented enough that we have a chance of seeing it on that pure luxury. But also, I thought it would be fun to use these colors because the camel is so warm. I'm wondering if the resulting yarn that we get might feel cool toned because we're using cooler toned colors. Uh, and so I thought that that would be fun. And depending on where things go, maybe we'll go and grab another dye stock, but these were the colors that I felt like I wanted to see on here. And we should have enough acid, but if needed, we can add more acid. We'll see how these colors behave. I'm super excited. All right, we're starting to get nice and steamy. We do have a bigger um, burner on this side, so I'm just gonna flip things around. Um, let this continue to heat up, because yes, we are still cool <laughs> in areas, but you can also kind of move the water through. Uh, I'm only, I would, I recommend checking before you touch the edges of the pan. Yeah, so we've got some heat, but it's not evenly distributed yet. So trying to help distribute that through the water by moving it, and once everything heats up a little bit more, uh, then we can start adding dye. So I think this little bottle is also emerald green. I don't know for sure, but we're gonna go for it. We're just gonna go for it. And we're gonna have something I think that's variegated, but I didn't wanna do like half, just half grain, half navy, like all along split, sort of almost dip dyed. I wanted to, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. The colors could end up spreading a lot. Um, I see almost nothing on the pure luxury. <laughs> that's not true. Something. I see something there, but it's going to be hard to see stuff on that base. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's see like if this is the same color. Okay, I think it, I'm going to add a little bit more over here as well. I think that they are the same color, but I think that the other bottle had it diluted because this is deeper. And now I see this on that pure luxury. Uh, and so we can feel that color be deeper and more. And so I just wanted to do something fun and we'll see how fast things strike. Of course, I picked a color here uh, with this 
emerald green that does not strike fast. So that is something that I do need to keep in mind because it might take a while for these colors to uh, absorb onto the yarn. But oh, I'm glad to have uh, something here, and in particular this this yarn right here, where I it's white and so then I can really get a feel of how much color I am adding. I haven't poured directly from the dye stocks for a while. And I think we'll be okay if we end up with some of the like original color showing through, but at least for what's visible up here, I am trying to cover it. It is amazing, and I don't know how much this is showing on camera, how different the tones feel already, whether I'm on the camel versus the, the silk yarn, just because like this feels almost like a more vibrant navy and it feels very muted over here. And so that's just actually pretty fun. All right, I think, uh, kind of want to, I think we're gonna add a little bit, oh dear, of green to that end and a little bit of some green to this end. So we don't end up with like a massive section of navy but this may not even go through the whole skein, but that's okay. The goal isn't to have like something perfectly repeating for this colorway. The goal is to have something variegated, but soft. And you can see those greens spreading. Okay, we're gonna do some navy here. I love that I am just pouring. No measurements today. <laughs> Oh, but in theory, the navies will strike a little faster, but some of that could overtake the green and we could end up with something a little bit more subtle, which is totally fine. And now pouring with my left hand. Uh, you might notice some drips down the bottle. That is okay. Uh, I have, uh, I'm putting it into a secondary container. So those drips are collected. Now currently you almost can't see the pure luxury yarn like at all, but I can tell you that I see it. Um, I see it, it is there and it has color on it, which is making it even harder but what I want to do now, I think I want to get some more acid because I know that there was a fair amount of acid in here already, but more won't sh or shouldn't hurt. Okay, so that's three, four, five. Now we know that there's absolutely unequivocally <laughs> plenty of acid in here. You know, as fun as it is to like measure and keep track of everything, it's also really fun to fly by the seat of my pants. And just because I'm doing a first look at a new yarn base, it doesn't mean that I have to keep everything measured and controlled. And I really, really like this colorway. Um, I like, in some areas, you can kind of feel that camel color still there, but I like that we've transformed it because I feel like my gut was wanting to like lean into the natural color, which is beautiful. Don't get me wrong, that would be stunning, but we don't have to do that. We can try to transform it and take it in a different direction. And I feel like I did that once with that yak and trying to do warm tones on it because it was more cool to start with. Or maybe I started with warm tones and then tried to do cool tones. I probably did cool. I mean, I've done everything on that yak. I love that base. But anyway, I'm gonna leave this uncovered for now so that way I can kind of peek in on it. But let's set a timer. There's lots of dye. Yeah, let's set a timer for 15 minutes and then we'll come back. It's been 15 minutes. All right, we still have green here, but it is reduced for sure. Ooh, all right, What's, which one was over here? The camel. So the navy on our pure luxury, and okay, there's still some navy there as well. But I was like, ooh, we still have a fair amount of navy on the camel. So colors there may strike slower, but that also could be based on my pores. So 
I'm wiggling it a little bit. Yeah, but I think at this point to help distribute the heat because things are definitely warmest in the center, I'm gonna cover it. I am going to cover this with just some foil. Um, you might notice this is something that I have definitely used on other projects. You can get lids for pans, but why not use foil? Um, and so I will heat this for another 15 minutes. But now, like there is still some steam coming out, but it will trap more of the steam in and help things be warmer all the way around. So we'll be back in another 15 minutes. I forgot to set a timer. So I think it's been 15 minutes. It might be longer. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Okay, let's see. All right. It's looking like certainly, oh, I smell that vinegar. It's looking like our navies have cleared. So what I'm gonna do now is flip the yarn. And we're gonna flip it all together. Eh, we're gonna flip one at a time. Okay, I see some white hints there. Here, I mean, flipping it is hard. We're not even gonna tell. <laughs> And, okay, here we definitely see, ooh, look at that camel color, um, a little bit in here. So I need to get my tongs. Trying to flip with just a spoon is silly. Okay, so I would say that we have really, really good color coverage, except for just like a few little spots. And the few little spots really don't bother me in here. They bother me a little bit here, but also they don't. So I think, uh, the problem is, okay, that looks like it's more green. The problem is I don't know where the colors are on the Pure Luxury because it looks so dark. And so therefore I don't wanna add color onto it and then lose the green if we're going to be able to see the green, right? And so I think what I'm going to do, and hopefully the squeeze nozzle will work. <laughs> Not well. Not well. But maybe well enough. The coverage does not need to be perfect. And the little bit of white over there doesn't bother me. Is it gonna come out? Oh, come on. Okay, but that's just covering. I don't mind if a little bit shows through. That was just, cause like right there, that doesn't bother me. I think we're gonna do that little bit and let it be. But I do need to still heat set that <laughs> and clean up this little bit of mess. So I'm gonna reduce the heat lower and then I am going to leave all of this covered. You see, the, the heat's a little vigorous. It takes time to fix that, but I'm leaving it covered, heat it for 30 minutes. Then I'm gonna turn off the heat, set it aside, let it cool completely, and so then we can wash it. And the washing will likely take place tomorrow. And that is mainly because of my schedule today. Uh, normally I might not wait overnight to finally take care of the washing stage, but I think that that's what's gonna work best for me uh, this time. And the only reason why I'm even pointing that out is because that way you know when sometimes I might wanna leave something overnight intentionally to have that time versus the overnight soak is just because of the way it is. And the other reason why I'm mentioning it is because should we then notice something off texturally with any of the yarn, then we know that I've left this for a whole day. And so maybe we don't wanna leave things in the acid that long. So that's just all. But anyway, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. It is the next morning, uh, afternoon, lunchtime. <laughs> and let's wash our Lux yarn. I will say the pure luxury looks just black right now. But the good news is I'm not seeing any color really left in the dye bath. Maybe the slightest hint of green. One concern of pouring dye out of dye stocks instead of measuring in any kind of way is that it is then uh, dangerously possible to overdo it. Oh, these are so pretty. Ooh, which one? 
Luxury. Oh, that is the Pure Luxury. So I was like, oh wait, this one's reminding me of that yak right now. Because it is the one with yak. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, let's add a little bit of dish soap to our pan. I do need to remember I'm dealing with some non-super wash yarn here, but we're gonna fill up this basin. All right. Let's see. If we see a tiny bit of green, uh, maybe, hard to say. Hard to say if I'm seeing a little bit of bleeding. I think it's mostly a reflection I'm seeing, but maybe the slightest hint of green, honestly not bad for this color. Not an amount that I am worried about. Uh, I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap and I'll put this through the skin dryer, hang up the yarn to dry, and if I do notice more bleeding, I'll come back and let you know. But the hint that I saw here was like nothing, so not worried about it. My first thought coming and looking at this again was, hey, it's my high school colors. <laughs> but this yarn is all so soft and silky that I didn't want to put it down. I just wanted to keep touching it and handling it. Oh my gosh, because like sometimes silk isn't always that soft, but then sometimes it's just mind blowing and the blends with either Superwash Merino, Yak, or Camel make it delightful. Here we have our three blends, the blend with Camel, Yak, or the Superwash Merino. And there's really not a ton of conclusions that I can make, except that the dye struck to the Superwash Merino a little bit faster. The color differences on our Camel Blend are much softer overall, and you see a bit more modeling, a little bit more unevenness in the Superwash Merino Silk Blend. Here's a close-up of the Camel, and we do see some of that color peeking through, but it's really nice. I'm glad I covered that tiny bit more than I did. I like what we have left. And here is the Superwash Merino Silk Blend. And the reason why I think some of the transitions aren't quite as soft is just that that superwash wool sucks up the dye. Our Yak Blend, I would put somewhere in the middle. What's interesting to me here is that even though this was fairly cool toned, the green is super, super subtle. You can barely see the green on here, especially when we compare that to our other two skeins where that green really does pop more. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and let me know if you want to see me do more fiber type comparisons. This video felt like really, really unique and interesting because all three of these yarn bases are 50% silk, and they all come from the same mill. Well, actually, okay, I don't know that. They come from the same yarn distributor, not necessarily the same mill. <laughs> Sometimes when yarn that is similar fiber content comes from different brands and therefore different mills, different sourcing for sure, then there can be more differences. And so I don't know that all of the silk in here is the same source. It may not be, but it's just a super fun comparison here. When I realized I'm like, oh, I have so many things that are 50% silk. I 100% want to dye more camel blends in the future. I think that this was my first time ever dyeing something with camel. And I mean, I don't know. I haven't looked for 100% camel yarn. That might be pretty expensive. I probably, I think I have some camel spinning fiber somewhere. Uh, very early on when I started spinning, uh, I connected with a fiber artist and who lived an hour away from me and she gave me trash bags full of spinning fiber to play around with. And there might have been some camel in there, but I never spun with it. But I digress. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and please subscribe and turn on notifications. I love to play around not just with different dyeing techniques, but different yarn bases. And I am very slowly working through my incredibly impressive stash where I have lots of random orphan skeins of different yarn bases. But I do want to show them off because maybe what I do can give you some inspiration of what to do on your own yarn, or occasionally maybe what not to do. <laughs> I try to show my successes and my failures because I think that when I do mess up, which thankfully isn't that often, but when I do, then we can all learn from it. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Thank you so much for watching.